welcome back to my channel. I'm Athena. This is my channel, Stitching Goddess Designs, and this is a channel about cross stitch and Harry Potter. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Um, stay a while. Uh, this is a big episode to start with. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. I am like five subscribers away from 600. So excited. I love to like celebrate the weird numbers. Maybe like at I don't know, I'm trying to think of a number off the top of my head. 648. Maybe at 648, I'll do a giveaway. <laughs> Weird numbers. Um, I'm definitely going to have to have a giveaway at um, 934. 934 followers. Nine and three quarters. Get it? I missed um, my opportunity with 394 should have done something darn it anyways okay um big huge episode because we had an amazing week and it's been two weeks since I've seen you guys I missed you guys I was so busy last week it was crazy busy um just getting ready for I'm looking at my notes sorry just getting ready for frog warts getting I had family in town there was just so much going on so much going on that I could I could have sat down and filmed a floss tube, but it was like adding stress to my life. So I decided to not to. Because really the only person that's like saying I have to be here every single week to film for you guys is me. You guys are so nice. Like if I miss a month, you guys would probably be like, you're fine, it's fine. We miss you, we want you to film, but you're fine. <laughs> I mean, it's my own rules that makes me want to get on here and do this every week. Mainly because the amount of stuff that I have over here to show you guys now is insane. Insane. Um, one thing I will say with Frogwarts, Frogwarts ended on Sunday night, but like in-person retreats, StitchCon, like I got no stitching done. None. Um, like a few X's here and there. But for the most part, you're like, go, 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 go. You're going over here. You're going over there. You're talking to this person. You're chatting with this person. It's like you're going to lunch. You're going to dinner. Like all these things. Virtual retreats. At least the ones that Black Needle Society holds. I've not been to other virtual retreats. But virtual retreats from the Black Needle Society are stitch intensive. So like so much stitching was done so much there are stitching challenges like almost every other hour and they last for an hour and you're supposed to stitch as many stitches as you can in that hour and you earn points for every 25 stitches you earn a point unless you're penalty stitching because there's prompts there's this whole thing i'm gonna go into that i'm de derailing here um i wanted to first talk about what was going on the last two weeks how was your guys's last two weeks um, this last two weeks for me was awesome. We had 4th of July. We had my youngest son's birthday. He's 14. Oh my god. Look. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy to me that he was 14. He, um, we celebrated his birthday on July 4th. We had family in town, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to celebrate his birthday. And then, um, he was going to be out of town for his birthday anyways, because he left on his New York slash DC trip with the eighth grade, um, fellow eighth grade students and teachers so he's still there he's coming home tonight he actually texted me just a little bit ago and said he was getting ready to get on the plane to Chicago so that's exciting I get to see him tonight and I'm hoping he took pictures he didn't send any pictures the whole time but like his teacher suggested that they take pictures and then come home and show us the pictures and talk to us about the trip rather than just sending us pictures and then we don't like communicate they don't understand though is that Nico likes to talk he's like me he will give me play by play of every single step <laughs> so I am prepared for him to be talking my ear off where we have like a 45 minute drive home and he will be talking the whole time if he's not super wiped out and tired he might be um, because they go, go, go. They wake up early. They come back to the hotel really late. They go, 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 go. So, um, also 
the day before 4th of July, so July 3rd, we celebrated Katie and Laura's birthday from the Black Needle Society and the uh, Katie or Laura's from the Pattern Queens. Anyways, um, we went to uh, Osage, Iowa, and there's the Stitchery Nook there. And great shop. Um, it's always kind of been like an outlier for us. Like we weren't exactly sure if we wanted that to be a day trip or not, but we splurged um because it's five hours so we left super early in the morning and um got up to des moines where we picked up carla rolodex stitches and then she came the rest of the way with us up to osage which was like mm, i think two hours from her house and um we shopped for a couple of, like i think we shopped for a lot longer than we wanted to we were in there a while um but there was like so much to see it i liked it because there was like a floor plan that you could follow some um cross stitch stores that you go to the stuff is just kind of like like everywhere and there's not a systematic way that you can view it all um like the silver needle I could spend weeks in that store and still not see everything that they have because there's no systematic way of like seeing it all um, the stitchery nook like you go down this wall and then you can come back up this middle and then you can go down that side and you come back up this and then once you're like once you've done it's a long process to get through it but once you've done all that you've seen it all uh, there will be a video at the very end of this, so if you don't want to hang out for the whole um, floss tube, you can fast forward. And um, I'll probably like throw some music on over the top of it because I didn't talk throughout it. Um, there was people talking in the background, and I didn't want to record their conversations for you guys to listen to. So, um, but when we were there, Sarah, uh, Memphis Sarah E., Yes, I think that's her floss tube name. Um, met us there as well because she was not that far. She's staying with her family there. And so she met us there. And so we got to see her too. And then we all went to lunch afterwards and like a complete ditz. Um, I had birthday presents for both the birthday girls and then it got halfway home. At, we had already even dropped off Carla. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot to give you your birthday presents. <laughs> So I literally, we pulled over at a rest stop and they opened their birthday presents. <laughs> I can't, I was so mad that I forgot to give them their birthday presents. But they loved everything and it was great. So, ah, my notes went away. Wake up. Um, I think that's it. Like, lifestyle catch up for you guys. Um... I'm super behind on making shirts. If you're expecting a shirt from me, I'm making them. I promise. I'm getting there. Um, Frogwarts, like family, um, then straight into Frogwarts, and now we're going straight into the other retreat. I did take yesterday and today, and I made a bunch of shirts, and I got some in the mail. So, and I should hopefully get some more in the mail tomorrow. Hopefully, your packages will be coming to you. Um, sorry for the delay. Normally I try to stay within a, like a two week processing, like be between your order and me mailing it. Um, I don't like to be more than that because then I just feel like I'm like stealing your money and not giving you a product. Um, but they're coming and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I did run into like some back order issues because like a lot of the shirts that are being ordered right now are for the Black Needle Society retreat. Could have brought one down here to show you i didn't um and they have three different colors of vinyl on them so they're a little bit more expensive and um the gold which is like the main of the design was like back ordered and they sent me the purple and the white but then they didn't send me the gold they said they would get, get it to me when they could and i'm just like i need it now and then by the time it came to me it was like I think it was like day one of frog words. I was like, great, what can I do with that now? Um, because you can, if you do frog words, like if you want to commit to frog words, you, you need all of your time. Um, 
I would say like if you since you're doing it at home and it's a virtual retreat like you need to tell your family that you're not home I'm not home you don't see me pretend I'm not here like you have to make plans for kids and spouses and everybody else to just leave you alone and throw food at you once in a while like I kept telling my husband I'm not here I'm not here I'm not here and then he was cooking breakfast I was like mm, what are you cooking and he was like you're not here and I'm like no no you have to feed me <laughs> feed me and then pretend I'm not home um so let me like try to quickly recap frog words I don't know how quickly I can do it but um we started Wednesday night and I went through Sunday night and there are stitching challenges there are stash dives and a stash dive is where they're gonna give you a list of like um, I'm trying to think how the stash dives look yeah it was just a one list and sorry Pepsi there was just one list and you had to like find every like patterns with and then there was like a list of like umbrella scarf frog I'm looking in the background can you tell um house cabin like whatever just this whole list of things and you had to go through your personal stash you have to own it and take pictures of everything to see if you have everything and whoever like uploads the most and gets the most wins the stash dive and then they had digital dives those are for more for like people who when I first played a stash dive game, I felt completely inadequate because I had like two things. I'm like, mm, I need to increase my stash, which is not a freaking problem now. Um, but <laughs> the difference a year makes, because a year ago I was playing stash dive games and feeling inadequate and I had like five patterns to my in my possession. Anyways, um, so digital dives are more for people that don't have a big stash. So they're going to give you another list. And for those, you go and you find like everything on the internet that like a pattern with a frog, but you can go search on the internet for a frog pattern, take a picture of it and send it in, screenshot it, take, send it in. So you earn, and you earn house points regardless of whether you win or not. For every item you submit, you win a house point. Um, so if you submit 10 items, but somebody else had 11, they win, but you still get 10 points. Um, and let's see, then there was Quidditch games and Quidditch games, um, are a digital dive, but on a team format. So you have a lot more items to find and you have like seven people playing at once on a team and everybody's submitting these pictures, um, and looking for them. So that's fun team building event. And then I'm trying to think what movies were going in the background of all of this happening. Movies were playing. And if you were in the movie chat, um, pop ups would happen. Katie would post something and it would be like, um, I'm trying to think of like, happy birthday to Harry, send, send Harry a birthday cake. So then everybody would just flood the feed with birthday cakes. And if you got in there in the first 10 minutes, um, because they're not going to give you like pop-up points like two days in a row, but if you got in there in the first 10 minutes, you got whatever the point was. Like some of them were three, some were one, some were four. They were kind of all over the place. And that was in the movie chat. But then on the Facebook feed, there was pop-ups happening there as well. And some of them in the movie and on Facebook, some of them were prize pop-ups and some of them were points pop-ups. So you can earn points if you did what you were supposed to do. And then the prize ones, if you did what you were supposed to do, you got entered. And everybody who like answered in the first 10 minutes got entered to win a prize. So prizes were insane. Insane. Um, so many prizes. So every day, not Wednesday, because Wednesday is like we had our opening ceremony and we had a couple stitching events and I think a Quidditch game. And that was it but then Thursday we went full on and by Thursday night they were awarding um, the two stash dive winners their prizes and then the pop-up prizes but then during the live 
there were pop-ups there as well. She would just say, okay, everybody give me a an owl emoji. And everybody would just, everybody's flooding the feed with the owls. And then she would be like, okay, number 22. And so they'd go through and they count to the 22nd. Um, I mean, they did this multiple times, like 22, 42, um, 56, 13, like they're just naming off numbers and the comment number wins. And Katie's got this big old box and she just reaches in there and she just grabs something out and that's what you win. Um, it was just so much fun. So much fun. Prizes galore. I know not everyone can win a prize, but... I think that there were um, a good amount of people that won prizes. There were a few people that won like duplicate prizes, but you, so you can only win one prize per event. So I think on two separate days, um, one person won a stash dive and a digital dive. So they won two prizes, but then they, then they can't win any of those games anymore. Um, and then the very next day, another person won a stash dive and a digital dive. So that was fun. Um, get all the way to the end. And the, so you were divided up into like groups of like nine or 10, depending on how many like people we had playing. Um, but everybody was divided up into these little subgroups. So if you were Gryffindor, you could be like all these different subgroups and Katie had them all labeled as like places in the castle. Um, so the only one I can think of off the top of my head is Transfiguration Gryffindor. Shout out guys! Cause they won for house MVP, which means their little subgroup of 10 people got more points combined than any other house little subgroup. Um, so they won house cup, so they got prizes. Not Yeah, house cup, and they, so they got prizes. And then within all of Gryffindor, like everybody, not the subgroups, but everybody in Gryffindor, there was one person that won, that had the most points in all of Gryffindor. And that person wins um, house MVP. Um, so that was Jennifer Gorski. She's amazing. Um, she comes to all our events and love her. She's wicked fast stitcher, like insane. And so I think all of her points came from her stitching. And she was like, you gotta have to kind of strategize what you want to do. And like, do you stitch the whole time and earn stitching points? Do you stop stitching and play games and earn game points? I mean, it's all, it's strategy, however you want to play it to try to get the most points. And then so there's an MVP for every single house. Um, I can't remember, I am sorry, I can't remember all of the MVPs for all of the houses. I feel like Hufflepuff was Jessica Allison. I'm just hollering out people's names and not even asking them permission. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. But kudos to you guys. I can't remember Ravenclaw. I can't remember Slytherin. I should remember Slytherin. Um, Donna, Donna, I'm not going to say your last name because I've stopped, I'm going to stop doing that. Donna, I believe, won Slytherin. I cannot for the life of me remember who won Ravenclaw. <sighs> I'm sorry. Um, anyways, each person won their house MVP. And then you have the overall champion, the person who won the most points out of everybody in the entire thing and that I know for a fact was Fawn and she is half of Sanctum Stitching uh, Floss Tube if you want to go check her out I'm sure she'll be sharing her prizes and everything that she got because she got amazing prizes amazing um, I won the overall MVP last year I was not an employee yet and so, I mean, I know it, it's a lot and I was super happy to have won that. Um, I left this shirt all the way over there, but I made a shirt that said I won Frogwarts year one, 2020. And 
um, super cute. Well, you know what? Here, I don't have the shirt with me, but I believe I have a picture. Let me see if I can find it. Yes. Um, there we go. I won year one frog warts. And then up at the top, it has the year 2020, and then it's got frogs over here. It's not like showing you too well. It's got frogs over on the side. Super cute. Up there is 2020 needle and a wand. I love it. Um, and I made it in Slytherin colors because I'm a Slytherin. But since Fawn won, and Fawn is a Hufflepuff, I will be making it in Hufflepuff colors. So it'll still be a black shirt, but with yellow writing instead. Um, and then, if that's not enough, there's still more prices, you guys. Um, Miss Luna, Ms. Luna Lovegood. There's a Miss Lovegood award. And it goes to, um, throughout the retreat, people can nominate other people that are being like super helpful, um, welcoming, friendly, um, just all of those things being overall, you know, just acting like Luna and just friends with everybody. And so last year I won that as well. And so you get nominated and then the voting opens and the voting is just between the people who've been nominated and then you can go and vote and then you win. So that one is solely picked by everybody else in the retreat. It's not anything to do with Katie, Laura, or myself. And so that's super fun that they all get to, everybody that's there participating gets to pick somebody. But I made this shirt for Miss Lovegood. So Katie asked me to make these shirts for the people this year. And I'm like, but I was both of those people last year. So I'm gonna make my shirts first. <laughs> And then I'll make your shirts. <laughs> but it was nice because then you could see what it's going to look like. So, you know, it says Miss Lovegood 2020 and it's just all Luna's stuffs on it. So that winner was Beth from Busy Bee Stitches, um, my good friend. So I was super happy she won that. And she is so super helpful to everybody. Like everybody coming into the rooms, if you're struggling with something, um, she's always going to be the one to jump in and try to help you technology wise or you know whatever she's always willing to help whoever with whatever they're having problems with um it was a great great weekend i don't know if i can i don't know what else i have to say about it but it was amazing let's i'm gonna just say that it was amazing um okay sorry looking at my notes again and trying to ignore the text messages that are coming through. So throughout the retreat, I needed to start things and to meet, meet the prompts. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Um, I was participating without participating. So if you were in the retreat and you saw these random posts pop up that said fake points, it was me entering in my fake points. So I would... Um do the stitching challenge, meet the prompt, not meet the prompt, whatever, and enter in my points and trying to um, see what I would, see if I would have won again. Now, it was kind of an unfair um, test because, I'm, I mean, I was still working and I knew that. My priority was to be working the retreat. So if people needed help, if um, I needed to break away and grade, as in award points, put points into the spreadsheet. Um, if I needed help with that, if I needed help, you know, somebody do anything and I was like hosting um, the, um, I was in charge of all the prefects who were doing all the grading, if they needed help. There was just all these different things that I needed to break away from stitching and do. So had I not had that, I probably, would have gotten there. The big point boost is to finish the year two pattern. If you finish the year two pattern, you get a hundred points and that is massive because most of the time you're earning like four points, five points, 10 points, maybe 15 points. So to get a 100 off of anything, one thing is just amazing. And I don't, it is, 
it is possible to win. I don't know if it's possible to win MVP, but it is possible to get up there and maybe be a house MVP um, and not have finished the pattern. But you, I mean, you really got to be on it for everything else. Um, what else was I going to say? So I did not finish the year two pattern. I got really close though. Um, so I didn't get that hundred points and without that hundred points, I wasn't going to win. But, um, I got pretty high up there. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, I think I would have been Slytherin MVP without finishing it. So, um, oops, my pillow just fell down. Um, okay. Let me, let me 25 minutes in. I mean, I've kind of been talking about stitching because Frogwarts, but let's see about showing you some whips. Where is my Frogwarts pattern? And I'm back. Okay. Sorry. I was all the way downstairs and now I'm all winded. I'm running all over the house trying to find it. Boom! You guys! I'm so close. Um, I have the snake head left to do over here. And then there's like a diary right here. And then I got to finish out the rest of the diamonds. And then there's the back stitching of the letters down here and then I'm done it was so close and I would like you guys to see the etoile in the letters down here enemies of the air beware is in etoile my spider webs are in etoile my potion is in etoile I changed the colors of the car I talked about that last video I changed the colors in the potion um, there's, I blended a purple and a gray, a toile. Um, the sword is all in a toile. I have to finish it off, but it's all in a toile. I have to backstitch the word pipes on there. And I'm going to put the flash, it's supposed to be white. I'm going to put it in, in a toile. Oh, and the mandrake. <laughs> I have to put the mandrake in. But, I mean... I was very close, but I was definitely not going to make it. So super happy with it though. I am not putting this away to just languish. This is um, going to stay out probably for this retreat and hopefully get done. Like hopefully I'm going to push on it and get it done. Um, I was going to like stitch on it yesterday and today, but then I was like, I need to get shirts done. Um, so I did that instead. But that was year one. That was my main focus of what I was working on. But then I started Teresa Kogut's um, Scylla Witches Quaker. And that fit a lot of the prompts throughout the retreat. Um, and this is how far I got. Uh, this which is not anywhere close to as charted um, I don't understand here hang on I mean it's this witch right here but I totally like I'm doing this in 310 but I totally like I was stitching and chatting kept miscounting and I'm just like I just need to not count off of her because nothing in her is in the right place. But because she's kind of on an, I mean, she's in the middle of everything. So I think it will be fine if she's one or two off either way. So but that's where I got. Super happy about that. And then you guys, I started, and this is a little bit of haul um, because I picked this up from one, two, three stitch. Sad note, and I forgot to talk about this in the very beginning I was going to, but the cross stitch community, you guys know where I'm going. We lost a um, very important person this last week and it happened, I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday, it happened right before Frogwarts was going to start and I have actually met Barb from Blackbird a couple of times in person. I met her first at the Show Me Retreat in 2019 in person. 
I was a brand new baby stitcher, like had been stitching for like months. That's it. Um, I didn't know what Blackbird was, didn't have a Blackbird, um, didn't know who she was. So everybody else was like fainting and fangirling and I was just like, I don't know who that is. Um, so I didn't recognize the significance. And I mean, as of Tuesday or Wednesday, I did not have, I still did not have a Blackbird. She's not, the patterns are not my style. They're not my aesthetic. Um, but I also can recognize the importance of all designers, whether they design patterns I stitch or not. All of designers, because everybody has a different style. Everybody is, all designers are so important. And it's, Blackbird is just a very, very huge, huge pattern um, designer. So, and it's Barb and Alma, and my prayers go out to Alma because that was her lifelong best friend, and my prayers go out to Barb's family. Um, yeah. So, during the retreat, one of the prompts was for um, Sir Nicholas's death day party that happens in year two. Um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are invited to go to Sir Nicholas's death day party on October 31st rather than going to the Halloween um, banquet, whatever, in the Great Hall. Um, so this the prompt was to stitch on something from a designer who is no longer with us. And I didn't have anything. I think I mentioned that in my last video. And I was going to fudge the rules and I was just going to stitch on uh, something else and probably take penalty points, whatever. Unfortunately, um, we lost Barb right before retreat started. And so a lot of us decided that Thursday night, I think it was the 9, 9 p.m. Central Time stitching challenge, a lot of us started and or took out a blackbird to stitch on. And it was just amazing being able to everybody stitch on the same designer and also to remember her. And um, I'm gonna stop talking because I'm already getting teary. Um, I ran into her uh, uh, at least once, maybe twice at um, CC and company, my LNS gear because she's local here. She's, she lives here in Kansas City. Um, so yeah, okay. Anyways, I got this from 123, casting a spell, and I'm going to probably stitch portions of it. I might do like this one and this one and then this one underneath and it should be all one piece of fabric. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it was such a rushed, get it, start it thing that I didn't really have time to plan and all of the things so I kind of just threw it together really fast but also because this is going to be such an important thing to me in remembering Barb and her importance that she's brought to the cross stitch community I wanted this to be a special piece and I may put her initials or something on there I mean maybe I'll do all four of these with Halloween underneath I'm not sure um, I have to see what my fabric allows uh, I kind of just started and went so we'll see um, but if you will remember I got this very gorgeous piece of fabric from Jody um, from Steel City Stitchers and I remember filming my floss tube and I remember saying that I'm going to hang on to this fabric forever because it's gonna be one of those fabrics that every time I go to start a project, no, it's not good enough for that fabric. No, that's not good enough for that fabric. Guess what? Little did I know, like months later, that something was gonna come along and be amazing for that fabric. Because I can, I can totally see Barb laughing hysterically at me turning such a neutral um, based um, mellow toned pattern into some bold amazingness. 
this amazing Jodi fabric. This amazing fabric. Uh, so I have started this one. This is the one. And the wing and the stem of the pumpkin are charted to be a brown where the pumpkin is orange, the center of the star is orange, and the rest is black. So I've gone with the black and I've changed it up obviously to a super bright orange. Um, it's 740. 740 and then I'm thinking it's going to be a gray for the wing and the stem. I'm not sure what gray yet but when I get there I will let you guys know. And I do believe that this whole thing only calls for three colors. So it will just be the black, the orange, and the gray. Probably right here. Maybe I'll just do this. Obviously I started with the bird at the top. So maybe it'll be these two, then these two. They're all in here, like broken up in individual so that you can stitch them individually. But yeah, I'll have to play with dimensions and how everything's gonna lay. So super love that. And I have, <clears throat> A good size piece of fabric I mean it's kind of all folded up and rolled in here but it's a good size piece of fabric so I'm probably going to stitch as much as my fabric will allow like that's probably how much how much of that pattern I'm going to stitch um, love it love it love it love it okay so then I also started the last start that I had was cauldron cleaner and I think I had to stitch on this for like maybe the fire prompt or I don't remember what I stitched what prompt I stitched on this for but this I was doing it in hand and I want to show you the pattern um I don't know which way is up or down but that's literally all I got two lines that's it um it was not it was not a progress hour. it was not a good hour and I only used it for like one challenge so I obviously did not get far with um, the other ones I used them for multiple challenges uh, so and then I was like picking them up in between challenges too because that was it was just a it just this gray just fell out of somewhere you guys as I was stitching throughout the weekend I was literally just like tossing floss around like I don't have time to mess with this I think it might go with this I don't know um but I worked on my spooky hollow dance hall uh it fit multiple prompts and I got I think all I got was the stairs in so maybe I didn't stitch on it for multiple and maybe it was just this hour and I got the stairs in and that's it and that is a uh, dance hall by little stitch girl and it's the Spooky Hollow series number three. And then, did I stitch on this? No, I pulled my long dog to possibly stitch on it, but I did not actually stitch on it, so that's fine. And then did I stitch on, I think I did, and I think I stitched in hand for this whole thing. So I worked a little bit on my Grimm's Fairy Tales. Got a little bit of progress in. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot. Um, I got this and this in. And part of that might not even be in the right color. Like, that is different from... That might be the wrong color. I don't know. I was just grabbing floss. Um, this is Grimm's Fairy Tales from Clouds Factory. I do not have a picture of the whole thing, but you can look it up easy peasy. It was a stitch along from last year. I need to talk faster because my husband is going to be home and interrupt okay I think that was all of my whips pretty sure so then um haul you guys remember when I said that I had like a bunch of haul coming because I was shopping yeah uh it's arriving <laughs> so um I'm going to show you this. No, I'm going to show you that last. Um, let's go over there with that. So Annie B's folk art. And it came all cute and tied up in a little ribbon. I found this 
um, I think she shared it on Instagram or something that it was like back for a limited time. She was offering a bundle. So I got all of the patterns. I did not get the fabric because she was only offering like a linen and I don't want to. Um, so I will need to find, I think some of this polka dot pattern, whatever you want to, um, fabric, whatever you want to call it. So, um, I have a window frame that's got like little clippy thingies on it. And so, and it's got nine. And I asked her before I bought them, like, what is the finished, what is the stitch count? And will, and, and I'm for 18 count figured it out and they will fit in there. So it's going to be perfect. Um, so there's nine of them all together. And this is number one, super cute. I'm going to go kind of fast. Number two, I am just all about this cutesy Christmas stuff. Number three. Oh no, they're not in order. Never mind. Sorry. I'm going to stop saying numbers. It says part six down there at the bottom of this one. This one says part five. <laughs> I love it. They're holding hands. Part four. Snowballs. Five cents. Part three. Mary, Mary. Um, part two. And part nine. I love them. What does that say over there? Oh, it says the year 2019. So maybe if I, maybe they'll say 2021, but I doubt it. They'll probably say 2022 on them. Um, cause they have a lot of Christmas already started. And then she sent a cute little freebie, which I'm not going to show you, but super cute Quaker Hill. It's called with that order. Then I also ordered, and I think I told you guys about this, the um, Al Forest Embroidery had some snail house, snail house thingies come out. So I got this kit, and I got this one because I ended up deciding on the house that I liked. Because one of them I liked the flowers, berries, whatever, one of them I liked the snail, and one of them I liked the house. Like if I could have got all three parts and stitched them together, I would have. And then I don't have the brain for that. So I got the house that I wanted and it's a super cute little box. It's not a big old giant box. Um, and they give you the threads that you need. So they have a cute little stitching guide and it did come with fabric that I don't know that I'll use because yeah, that's linen. I don't know that I'll use that. Um, but it came with this little, little bitty threads. Um, I've bought their threads before and they're normally bigger than this. So I feel like they gave you as much as you need to stitch the pattern, but super beautiful colors. And then of course it comes with the needle and needle minder. Let me pull it out of the bag so you guys can see it. Came with the needle and needle minder. There you go. Oh, she's so cute. And so that's the snail with those blue flowers in the background. So love, love, love it. Um, the only thing I'm not going to love is stitching with this pattern. And I know people have said this before, but it's like huge, not huge, enormous, but it does have a color and black and white next, next to each other. So I do like that because sometimes I like the black and white. Sometimes I like the color. It just depends on what I'm looking at and trying to focus on. Uh, I got my Jody fabric for July and I love 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 um, beautiful gray I haven't even actually opened these all the way yet but beautiful like slate gray um, chalkboard yes please or a nice Halloween yeah that's that's gonna be awesome um, then this amazing like bluey purpley I mean, I would say this is definitely more of, oh, ah, this is my first time opening it. Oh my God. Um, this is like more of a bluish, a gray blue, but then you've got the splashes of spots, words, the, the splatters of purple in there. You guys, words. Oh, this is not, okay, maybe right there. Giving you a good, what it looks like in person right there. Oh man. Yeah, it comes closer. I blow it out. So definitely back here. Man, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Jody. I don't know if you even watch me, but oh my god, 
I love it when you like get real life reaction of me opening the fabric. Um, while I was at um, Stitchery Neck in Osage, of course I bought some stuff. They have a huge scrapbooking section too. I was not prepared for that. And I literally put blinders on and ran through that section because no ma'am. I have a ton of scrapbooking supplies and I haven't scrapbooked in like years and years and years and years. I need to. There's a ton of stuff that I need to get into a scrapbook. I no, I couldn't walk down that. Nope. Um, I picked up Firework Lane, which might be a duplicate. I might already have this. If I do, then this will go in the giveaway folder. I picked up, you remember I got, um, Kitty and Laura got me a, a Suhilis pattern. And on the back was this one. I was like, oh, yeah, I really want this one. So I love it. And it's got, the, it's got a cute little ribbon that you, it didn't come with a ribbon. I could definitely find some ribbon to put in there though. But yeah, if the shoe fits. Um, I would need one that says, sometimes you just got to put on the hat and remind them who they're dealing with. Let's see, yes. Um, Spooky Halloween. I think that Lara found this one for me. And this is by Abby Rose Designs. What does it say down there? Bubble, bubble on the closure. Cute. Um, Country Cottage Needleworks. This also might be a duplicate. I'm not 100%. Um, but the dream is to have a um, all of these kinds of things like up in my office stitching room thingy. I got the next, and I'm, I can't show you this because the pictures are so tiny. But the next sampler of the month from Country Cottage Needlework is the August sampler. And you see what I mean. It's so tiny. Not You can't see detail in that at all. I finally got my first little stitcher pattern. I have wanted for a very long time. Like, it's just been hard for me to find one that I love, 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 love. Um, and it was between this one and the Headless Woman. But this is the one that won. The Banshee's Cry. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I love the tombstones. I love her. I love her hair. I'm going to finish it with some freaking spider webs across it. Yeah. Love it. So then I got um, this. So they had a ton of Bent Creek there that I had never seen before. I didn't know Bent Creek did um, like series types things that you can stitch all together. So you can see them. There they are. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five of them in there. And then they go in this frame. So here's the thing is I picked this up and I looked at this and I was like, oh my God, I love it. Love, love, love it. Exactly as it's shown in this picture. Black and white. However, patterns, not black and white. They are in color. So I am going to convert these someday, some year, some time in my life to blacks and grays and whites. It's not going to be too terribly hard to do, especially since I have that front picture to go off of. And then each one of these, no, I won't be showing you the pattern, has the snaps because this is a snapper collection. So it has the snaps on the back. What was that? See what I mean? Like, I did not know that Bent Creek had these, you guys. I'm such a baby stitcher. But there's a whole nother little series. Glad you're here. Welcome. Hello. Make yourself at home. Will you stay a while? That's the Halloween one. That's the Halloween one. That's the Halloween one. And then inside the this, for the... um because there's a bunch of snaps there and buttons, they give you some more. So you really got the entire thing. You got the border and the snaps and all of the patterns for $44. Not bad at all. Um, five patterns. Well, essentially like six patterns with the border and all of the snaps and buttons that go with. So that's awesome. What time are we? Okay, we're doing good. We're over almost an hour, so we are definitely going on over an hour in this video. Definitely. 
because I still have the tour to put on the end. Um, and then I wanted to just, every time I go to an LNS, I kind of just kit up, not kit up, I, I, I go over to the floss and I do my own thread. Like, you know, when you're in a thread club, you get like a colorway every month. So I just do my own um, every time I go. And I just got a bunch of blues because I was looking for a nice blue for the car, for the Weasley car, um, the Ford Anglia. Haha, <laughs> watch me say it. Um, so, what was I saying? You can't tell if my husband's here or not. I don't think so. Um, I was looking for a nice blue. Sorry, squirrel. Um, and so, and I didn't have any. So I bought a whole bunch of blues. These are all gentle arts. Yep, they're all gentle arts. And we have Blue Jay. We have Deep Sea. Cottage Blue. Huckleberry. Morning Glory. Why am I getting so blown out? Gosh, it looks white almost. Um, forgot to look at the name. Cornflower. I'm trying to not blow them out on for you guys. And dungarees. So, just picked up some more to add to my collection. Um, what else did I get haul wise? I got the one, two, three, Osage. Oh, um, the Witchy Stitcher has a new sal starting, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And I hadn't bought a single sal, mystery sal, all year long. Not one. Because, no, I need to see the sals before I buy them. Apparently that's a lie. Because, sight unseen, I jumped in. It is the cryptids sal. They are going to be featuring Victorian cryptids. What? Yes. Um, I don't know how many cells that she's done exactly, but I do have Universal Monsters and I do have the Chopping Mall. Love them both. So I'm super excited to see what the cryptids bring. And the, this time, so this is from The Witchy Stitcher. And with my order, I got a cute, um, I think this is a sticker. Yeah, I think it's a sticker. Um, this amazing sticker. This is like her logo emblem kind of a thing. Um. The Sal, I bought PDF, so I just have access to that. She's in Canada, so whatever. I mean, I guess I could have bought a physical copy because I bought something that shipped to me anyways. But um, for this Sal, I digress. For this Sal, she created a mascot. And our mascot is the DMC 310 Cone of Doom. Y'all might remember I have my own Cone of Doom. Bellatrix is her name. So I have a pretty giant cone of doom. Um, so when I saw this, you guys. Sorry for that brief uh, freak out there. Pause, skip, whatever. <laughs> I freaked out so bad I started coughing I couldn't breathe. Okay, Bellatrix, Cone of Doom, yes. And it came on a freaking shirt. You guys. <sighs> I have my own Cone of Doom shirt. There you go. I love it. This is so awesome. So awesome! This is a fun nod to stitching without actually being like overly in your face stitching. I love it. Um, so that's what I got from the witchy stitcher. Okay, last thing a haul. Uh Lint X stitches and Colleen. That's all that's coming through my head. Colleen. Rebel Stitcher. She's got a floss tube rebel stitcher on Instagram. She's Moon Pie Fry. Um they teamed up and they did a um, charity bag 
to support glisten glisten I think it's glisten um, this is glisten G L S E N and as Glisten was founded by a group of teachers in 1990, we knew that educators play key roles in creating affirming learning environments for our LGBTQIA plus community youth. So that's what they do. They um, coordinate with chapters and states to ensure that we have access to schools and districts across the country and every student, empower students to affect change by supporting their student-led efforts, um, they they support the LGBTQ community in schools and get kids to um, speak out for themselves, um, get rights for themselves within the school system. And you guys, this couldn't be a better bag. Like I saw her, she she gave me kind of like a sneak peek of it at StitchCon, and I'm like, yes, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, huge. And I'm not going to get all political on you other than to say that I hate JK Rowling. That's it. That's all we're going to say. And this bag is the biggest giant F you to JK Rowling I have ever seen. Ever. You guys. It's the sorting hat in all the rainbow colors. We've got the trans flags. We've got the gay pride flags. We've got the, um, oh, I can't even think of it. The... Um, non-binary just all the different all the different ones and I am here for it because what else should we do besides turn her symbol of magic and positivity into something that's amazing because she would hate to see this fabric and good good <laughs> um, this is the inside uh, it's got all the houses, all the house animals. This is the zipper pull. It's got a little button on there with the fabric. So this bag was made by Lynn X Stitches. She's got a floss tube. Rebel Stitcher. I could have just looked at your card. Sorry, Colleen. Um, made the needle minder. And you guys, if you are still here and you made it through all of my crazy rambling, um, you will remember I bought this exact one at StitchCon. So I now have two of these. Guess who gets the second one? You guys do. Um, if you will drop a, what kind of emoji? I mean, is there a rainbow? Yeah, I think there's a rainbow. If you drop a rainbow emoji or um, maybe even like the colored, all the different colored hearts, give me a rainbow. Say the word rainbow if you can't figure out emojis. That's fine. Um, Give me a rainbow. I will enter you to win this needle minder from me. Because amazing. And also, Rebel Stitcher made, we got another one of these cute little um, threaders, but then Rebel Stitcher also made, oh, you guys, this amazing um, zipper pull. It's got a cute little flag, all the colored beads, hearts in between. I can't. I love it. Don't focus on my face. Oh, love it. So cute. So, give me a rainbow for this needle minder, and I will get that to you. I will announce the winner next week. I'll probably close it like sometime on Tuesday whenever I pull for that. Um, whenever I, yeah, I pull and then I'll film. And then. That's, oh, I have a little side note. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and like watch my floss tubes or something. I have this amazing fabric. Look how cool this fabric is. It was sitting on a chair up here. You guys, I don't know where it came from. Um, It's like a bluish, but then it's got brown splotches in it. It was just sitting on my chair. I text Katie and Lauren, I was like, what have you guys done to me? Because I have fabric laying around and I don't know where it came from. I asked Katie, was it in a box? Did you guys buy it for me? They said no. Uh, so if anybody can remember my floss tubes and has remembered me showing this, I mean, I feel like I had it sitting on the chair because maybe I wanted to show it as haul. But I don't think... No, I did buy fabric at... Um, 
I bought fabric at Osage, but it was this fabric, which is a printed, like it's got modeling in there. And it's for my, this one, <laughs> my, this one, the Silla Witches. But see, it's printed because it's not on this side. It's only on this side. So that, I think that was the only fabric I bought. I don't remember buying this fabric. I don't know where it came from. It wasn't in the bag from Osage. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's a Jody fabric either because Jody does not know. She doesn't search her edges and these edges are searched. You guys, I don't know. Um, Magical Hall. So if you're here for Magical Hall, or if you're peace out for Magical Hall, um, bye, love you, see you next week. Uh, I got some really cool things passed down to me from a friend. Um, this, it's a, a keychain, but it'll also be a zipper pull, I guess. It's a Yule ball, and then it has like all the information for the ticket on the back. I don't understand what the numbers are, 310 and 780 on the back. I don't know what significance they hold and Beth didn't know either so she knows everything Harry Potter are, so I have no clue um but it's pretty heavy so I don't know if I'll put it on a bag or if I'll use it as a keychain or just decoration in here somewhere um love that love that and then I got this is a needle minder Hermani Hermani I believe it's Hermani and it's a needle minder Love it. Love her. Look at her fit, little feet. And then I got this one is a necklace, but I think that I'm going to take this off, pull out the little eye hook thingy, and put a magnet on her and make her a needle minder as well. She's super lightweight. She was even lighter than this one, so she would work good as a needle minder. And she's super pretty. Um, last thing I'm going to show you here from this box right now is this cute little bracelet and it says turn to page 394. And then from the other box of hand me down Harry Potter, I'm just taking all over these. You guys want, you guys don't want to hear Harry Potter stuff? Send it, send it. I will take it. Send it my way. Um, okay, so this is just an empty box, but a super cool display. Flourish and Blots. How amazing is that to just sit on your shelf? Yes, please. Yes, please. I don't have a... Maybe down here. Just... Oh, you can't see it. But yeah, just sit on your shelf and like... Yeah, cute. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to just empty out this box today, you guys. Maybe not. We're over an hour. This set of Pez dispensers never open it's got all that fizz back then no not eating that not opening this either um i simply cannot believe that it has passed down to me because it is a limited edition it is number 9255 of 100,000 made only 100,000 of these out in the universe how many of them do you think are still sealed and in a package in perfect pristine condition i don't know but someday, limited edition, maybe I'll have money sitting on my shelf. Um, love it. Love it. Um, okay, let's just show a couple more pieces of artwork here. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think this, this was drawn. This, I mean, it shows Minister of Magic up there stamped in the top. And it says Cornelius Fudge. It's the Nimbus Racing Broom Company, and it's the drawings for the Nimbus 2000. So. And one last piece of art. Um, Beth is going to have to tell me who the artist is. She has the artwork. She has the original artwork, and this is a print. How oh, amazing. I'm 99% sure this is a Thestral. But how freaking gorgeous. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I love that I have this in my collection. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you magical haul wise. Um, there's still quite a bit left between these two boxes that I have now. Um, so we still have stuff to show for weeks to come. Not worried about that. Um, 
that's all I have for you guys. I have another retreat starting tomorrow, uh, Black Needle Society Night Garden Retreat. It's going to be amazing. I've made shirts for the retreat. Um, it's definitely more low key, laid back, less challenges. Um, the time, like you have two hour stitching challenges instead of one hour, which means that you can get up and take a break, walk around. You don't have to like stay stitching for an hour. Um, but still going to be fun. Um, I will see you guys next week after two weeks in a row of cross stitch retreats. And I should have a ton more progress to show you because I'll be sitting here and stitching for like five days straight again. Um, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, let's check the notes. Let me just, let me just check the notes. Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of the things. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I will see you guys next week. Thank you for coming and watching. Like, subscribe, all the things. And don't forget to leave me a rainbow. Bye!